Do the Dallas Cowboys need more out of Dak Prescott going into the 2023 season? All that more in this episode of the Locked On Cowboys podcast. You are Locked On Cowboys, your Locked daily Dallas Cowboys on. podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Locked Network, your on. team every day. Locked On. Locked on. Locked on Cowboys. Cowboys. Welcome back to the Locked On Cowboys podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. We'd like to thank you for making us your first listen of the day. This episode is brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook, the official sportsbook of the NFL. Make every moment more. Visit FanDuel.com slash Locked On today. To get started, I am your host, Marcus Mosher. You can follow me on Twitter at Marcus underscore Mosher. Joining me today, as always, is Landon McCool. You can check him out on Twitter at McCoolBCB. Landon, today we are talking about the state of the quarterback position for the Dallas Cowboys. And let's start with this. How would you grade the Cowboys quarterback play in general, Dak and Cooper Rush combined during the 2022 season? Yeah, it's tough. I mean, I think that you know, a lot of us are, are our minds are going to go to the interceptions because that's the conversation that's been having, you know, in in the off season. And, and of course, there's so much focus on what went wrong uh, whenever you don't win the Super Bowl. Uh, but I think you know, all things considered, you know, when the receiver core didn't just never developed to the way that we wanted it to, the the depth there just never got where it needed to be. Um, I think that that and, and then also considering the fact that, you know, some of those games that we're talking about, it's a backup quarterback situation. So that's always going to be more difficult for that player coming in. I think that they, they that overall that they had a an admirable season. I think that there's definitely one that they would like to have, you know, some throws back. Obviously, when you're the interception leader, that that's going to happen. Um, but I, I, I think it's easy to kind of look at those kind of stats and draw a whole bunch of bad conclusions when in reality, I think the quarterbacks were doing what they could with what they had uh, a lot throughout the season. And I think ultimately, uh, you know, pressing while not having yep. a, a lot to kind of press to uh, can, can, can cause some issues, can cause interceptions. And I think that's what we saw. All right, let, let's let's. First start with the interceptions, because that's the thing everybody's going to point to. Dak Prescott had 15 interceptions and 12 starts last year. Cooper Rush had three and a handful of starts. I was actually telling you pre-show that the Cowboys threw more interceptions as a team than they had on defense last year. 18 interceptions to 16 on defense. That was quite surprising. However, as we've talked about all offseason and as many others have pointed out, a lot of fluky interceptions like oh, yeah. Dak Prescott hitting Peyton Hendershot directly in the chest and the ball bouncing up into the air into the into the arms of a defender. I think there were a few interceptions in there that were bad where Dak was pressing, yeah. he was forcing, or he was throwing the ball to a receiver that he didn't trust in. But there were a lot of them that were just fluky, like a pass hitting Noah Brown in the chest and bouncing up into Rayshon Jenkins for a game winning touchdown. Like, I, I'm just not going to stress about fluky things like that too much. Yeah, and I think that these, you know, we're talking about two things here with the receivers, right? It's 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 the fluky nature of the, and, and honestly, there were what five or six of those situations. I mean, yeah. it wasn't just like one or two. Like there were several different times when it appeared that the receiver was setting up the interceptor for a spike, like in volleyball. You know, it was like they yep. they set it up in the air and it was tip drill. So. I certainly think that's, you know, one thing here. I think the other thing to to kind of, you know, that's what's put at their feet, but but to kind of point out is what Dak was dealing with is a lot of wide receivers who were not open, you know, and, sure. and that were not creating separation the way that, that we were hoping that they would. So, uh, I, and I think that there's times when you got to throw the ball either way. You got to try to find a way to win the sure. ball, win the game. So um, I, I think that there are, there is, a, you know, a, a conversation to be had about whether, you know, you want to try to figure out a way to rein in Dak a little bit or, or try to, you know, kind of clean up a little bit. And and I think we're going to hear a lot of lip service about that from the coaches because that's all the reporters are going to ask them about because that's just a talking point that people want to hang their hat on. But the truth of the matter is, is that 
it would be a huge mistake to try to rein in a lot of Dak's aggressiveness because that's a lot of what makes him special. And I think that if you look at the sample size of his entire career, instead of just that one season, you'll find out that despite being a very aggressive, you know, uh, thrower of the football, Dak has been, you know, one of the actually league leaders in kind of lower interception rates throughout his career, as far as career goes. So I, I tend to think that this, you know, the the fact that I, we've we've watched Dak throughout his career and never really felt like he had an interception issue, the the fluky nature of what we just discussed, the fact that the that he's trying to press with receivers who aren't getting open, I mean, I think it, it paints a pretty clear picture of needing to try to find a way to either scheme or produce space, uh, whether that be with more talented receivers or different, you know, play calls. I think that's where you start with the quarterback because you've got a guy who has shown you throughout the years that that, that aggressive play is, is, is a benefit, not, not, not a detraction that we should be working around. Yeah. You talked about reigning in Dak. I I would actually go the other way. I I thought, if you're going to criticize Dak from last year, I, I thought he wasn't aggressive enough. And actually the numbers bear that out, right? Like you look at his production from 2019 to 2021, Dak was averaging 7.9 yards per attempt, 8.2 adjusted yards per attempt. Those are both like inside the top five of quarterbacks during that stretch last year, 7.3 yards per attempt. adjusted yards per attempt. That's the second worst of his career. I don't want to rein him in, right? I I, I can live with interceptions if they're fluky or if it's being, because you're being aggressive. I'll live with that. If the trade-off is I'm getting a really hyper-efficient passer who every time he's throwing the ball, we're basically getting a first down, right? That's the deck I want to see again, not okay, let's limit his passing attempts and basically make him a check down quarterback. Like that you're not going to win making Dak that kind of quarterback at all. No. And, and I, I think, you know, to their credit, it does sound like that is what the, the coaching staff wants to do too. They want They want him to be aggressive. They want him to attack. They want to, uh, they've talked about in the office wanting to attack, you know, even before teams are ready, you know, like, and that's something that they kind of harped on. So, I agree. I mean, obviously, I think it's easy to look at the interceptions and say, oh, they need to rein Dak in because, you know, that's the kind of normal talking points you hear whenever a quarterback throws too many interceptions. But I don't think that's the case with Dak. I think that Dak is one of the best aggressive uh, quarterbacks when he's allowed to do that. I think that the the, the problem is you need to put a system uh, around him that is mm-hmm. going to make that more palatable. I, I mean, look, look at Tom Brady. Tom Brady was considered one of, obviously one of the greatest quarterbacks who's, who's ever played. He's played in a whole bunch of different types of systems in a, in a lot of different ways. He's been the kind of check down quarterback uh, at different points of his career. But when he put up big numbers, it's when he got aggressive down the field yep. and when he was surrounded by guys like Randy Moss who could take advantage of that aggressiveness down the field uh, and actually produce at a high level. I mean, think about the types of throws you make down the field. When you're making throws down the field, it's a lot of trust on these guys. So, and, and I think that the uh, interception stuff and the kind of check down numbers that we saw from Dak last year, I think they're related because I think that Dak lost trust in his ability to go deep uh, down the field with anyone other th- than CeeDee Lamb at a certain point. And so because of that, it uh, it rained the 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 offense in. You didn't stretch defenses down the field, and now suddenly Dak is having to throw in a bunch of tight windows in a small box where the safeties yep. are down low, and everything's happening in a fifteen to twenty yard box. And it's it's like trying to throw. Uh, it's just like how it, it becomes more difficult to throw the football in the red zone, right? Because everything gets tighter, all the windows get compressed, and if you don't feel like you can stretch that window up, up the field. You can't stretch out those zones. You can't stretch out those defenders. You can't find the space for your receivers to create, especially receivers that are struggling to create on their own as it is. So you add in Brandon Cooks to help vertically stretch that, and then that opens up space underneath. That hopefully will allow you to attack down the field with more confidence with the people that you're throwing. But then on top of that, also just open everything up underneath for everyone that's operating, whether it's tight ends, running backs, or wide receivers running short routes. Everything gets uh, a lot more space when you've stretched things vertically to allow the defenders to have to cover more ground every single time they drop into coverage. All right, let's talk about Dak Prescott kind of heading into 2023 
with Brian Schottenheimer as the offensive coordinator with Mike McCarthy calling plays next. This episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make a fast break to FanDuel during the NBA playoffs because right now, new customers can get a no-sweat first bet up to $2,500. That is $2,500 back in bonus bets if your first bet doesn't win. I think the Nuggets pull it off tonight. I think they, mm. they complete the gentleman sweep, win 4-1 to uh, win the NBA championship. Go bet on the Nuggets right now. I think they're like eight and a half point favorites. There's no better place to bet on all the playoff action than America's number one sports book. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and get a no sweat first bet up to $2,500. That is FanDuel.com slash locked on FanDuel, the official sports betting partner of the NBA. We would like to thank you for making Locked On Cowboys your first listen of the day. Every day is tomorrow on the show. We're going to be talking about the running back position, kind of the state of that position as we go into the 2023 season. So make sure you tune in for that. Landon, going into this year, hmm. what type of play do you expect the Cowboys to get with Dak Prescott from that quarterback room with the new people calling plays? Yeah, I mean, I think it's it's – you know, there's been all this kind of talk about a change in offense or like change in system. I think if anything, what they're doing is just going to adjust things to make Dak again even more comfortable with what what things are going. I think the really interesting thing that we've 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 heard, and maybe we should do a whole show about this, is the kind of quiet whispers that some folks inside the building seem to be glad that Kellen Moore is gone, uh, which I think is a little bit interesting. I I, I tend to think that. The change that's going to happen this season is going to be almost everything uh, 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 tied to how the Mike McCarthy is calling the plays differently than Kellen Moore. I mean, I, I just don't know that there's X's and O's going to be a lot of difference, uh, you know, outside of some of the other stuff we've heard. So what I think that we've heard is that, you know, that they, they're, they're, they're changing some of the pass protection stuff. I tend to think that what that means is that you're going to see more receivers in route which I think is going to give Dak more options to throw the football uh, down the field and, and take advantage of, 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 of you know, mismatches down, you know, down the roster. Um, so I, I'm hoping that what this means is that they're going to be quick with the ball. They're going to play a little bit more up tempo. Uh, they're going to attack. They're going to attack. They're not going to be afraid to uh, you know, throw with a little bit less protection than they had previously and hoping that they're getting more folks out and route. And what this is hopefully going to provide Dak is more opportunity to get through progressions. I think that you know one thing that Dak has always been really good is, uh, is going through progressions, but I think there have been times – when he gets through his progressions and there's no one open, and yeah. then he and he's starting to try to go through it again, I think giving him more people out in route will give him a guy who is so good at getting through progressions quickly uh, at least one or two more opportunities for someone to be open uh, before he has to kind of you know maybe make a throw that he's not t entirely comfortable with or you know tr you know try to run and get some extra yards or throw the ball away. Let, let me ask you this: what what type of play or like what caliber of play would Dak Prescott need to play at for the Cowboys to kind of get over this hump, like to get back to an NFC championship game to get to the Super Bowl? Like, do they need Dak to play like a top seven quarterback, a top five quarterback? Like define that for me. I think, you know, with the defense that you've got and, and, and depending on how, you know, the run game kind of comes back into things, I think you're at least. I mean, the quarterback is is the driving force of all of this. I mean, that's just the way the NFL is. I think you're going to need top five production in order to uh, get back into the NFC Championship. Top seven, top five is. I think that's a good good range, right? Um, I think that the, if you got a similar season from Dak that you got in, uh, hopefully, getting the seasons right, 2021. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think that that is the kind of production that could that could be carried into the NFC Championship. I think that the key is that the team needs to kind of continue that level of offensive output throughout the season, right? Like yeah. I think the issue has been at times that it felt like the offense got stale by the end of the year, the last two seasons, and then what you've seen is Dak trying to press to create. Uh, in a situation where it, the offense and the, the the players in the offense are not providing for him 
the way they had earlier in the season. They're not getting as open. The offense isn't, you know, t- catching people off guards. Whatever, whatever you want to say, the offense doesn't seem as efficient as it does at the end of the season. I don't think that that's necessarily Dak. Like, I mean, yeah, if you I if you watch it these last two years, it's not like Dak's play himself specifically seemed to drop off. It seemed to be that the offense couldn't couldn't get anything going, couldn't find people open, couldn't block. So. I think if as long as Dak continues a level of play that we've seen, you know, in the years previous to last year, I think that's good enough. I think what we need is the rest of the offense to kind of lift up and help support him a little bit. More. The one thing I will say is, and I think you'll you'll be able to figure this out within the first seven or eight weeks of the season. Like, if the Cowboys are going to have some playoff success, what they need to do is get Dak playing at a higher level earlier in games and we talked about this all last year it yeah, seemed like yeah. it took a few drives for them to finally figure things out and then it clicked and then they were fine the tampa bay game the playoff game was a perfect example like they struggled to get a first down was it the first two or three drives and then the rest of the game it, they were touchdown drives but yeah. it was like why was it so hard to get that first first down and i i don't know why but if, you, if they can get off to quicker starts, have drives that start with touchdowns early in the first quarter, just get Dak into a little bit of a rhythm, that's when I think this Cowboys team is going to be really hard to stop because they are built to play with a lead on both offense and defense. Once this defense gets a lead, they're going to be the best in the league just because of that pass rush. So if Dak can find a way to get into a rhythm, they're going to be just fine. Yeah, I think that's one of the things that we talked about is we, we had complained about previously that it didn't always feel like the team had a great uh, opening game script. You know, the, the, the team struggles early on. The team struggles to get Dak in rhythm early on. Um, I, I do think that kind of getting out and playing with a little bit more tempo early will help with that. It'll be interesting to see if the, this coaching staff uh, uh, will will take that yep. take advantage of that ability of Dak to kind of get into a, 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 a real nice rhythm with a bunch of quick passing early. All right, let's talk about the future of this Cowboys quarterback position as Dak Prescott enters year three of his contract extension extension next. All right, Landon, the Cowboys have Dak Prescott under center for the next two years, the 2023 and 2024 season. However, the 2024 season, he carries a massive yeah. cap number. I mean, it's, it's huge. So the Cowboys kind of have to figure out something – this off season or early next off season uh, because he can't play on that number. It's, it's just massive. So yeah. my question to you is, is there anything that Dak could do during this season that would make you hesitant about giving him a long-term contract? Or do you think the Cowboys should just be like, Hey, we're fully invested in this guy. Give him a contract now so we can kind of start to smooth things over for the next several years. I mean, it's always tough to, to kind of predict things that are unpredictable, right? But yeah. but I I think that you know an injury that was pretty gruesome, you know, maybe if we saw more of something that uh, he had already previously injured, like his you know his ankle again, or or you know something like that that was just really made you concerned for his long term situation, that could do it. I don't know if there's like you know any non injury like if he if he had another season another season like he did last year where it's you know, 27 touchdowns and 16 interceptions and averaging seven and a half yards per attempt. Would you be a little bit hesitant about giving him another let's deal? Put, let's put it this way. If he goes through next year and has a season like he did last year without injuries or without, you know what I'm saying? Because part of what is tied into a lot of what happened last year is that he got injured and he, and he kind of came back from that. And, and injury is a real thing. And, 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 and it certainly is. Uh, a common thing in the NFL and, and and injured players tend to get more injured as they get older. So if, 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 if there was a situation where he was healthy and he's still, and, and you know, everything's right, you've got every, you've got all these pieces out there and, and it still isn't looking right. It, or Dak is just not seeing things or is just not throwing the football. Well, uh, I mean, it's, it's possible. Uh, I just, I just don't anticipate I mean, and again, it's hard to anticipate. I just don't anticipate him playing that poorly. Uh, his game would have to fall off a cliff. Let's put it that way. His game, his yeah. his like his skill set would have to kind of fall off a cliff. And, and if maybe if he started seeing ghosts, or if the, he took something with him 
you know, in the, from the previous season into this season that like he can't get over. That's like a mental hurdle or something like that. I, I, maybe, but I, I honestly think that that last year was the fluke bad year. And, and again, I think there's obviously some circumstance that there. And I, you know, I, I think like we've been saying, even last year, which is this bad year that he had that they went to the playoffs and won a playoff game. Um, he his play wasn't terrible. Uh, you know, it's just well, that he was I think we should remember, like, it, right? the, the Tampa Bay playoff game was maybe arguably the best game he's ever played. And then he had a bad game against San Fran, the, the best defense in the league. That happens, right? But let's let's yeah. not forget that Tampa Bay game where he was nearly flawless. I'm with you. I I think it's very likely last year was a fluke in terms of the interceptions because of the wide receiver core was bad. Uh, however... I am open to exploring other possibilities, but the problem is, is what's the alternative route? Yeah. Like you, you didn't draft a quarterback this year and I get it. There were yeah. the options that they had in each round were not great. So that's, that's fine. Your backup quarterback is Cooper rush who we saw last year. We haven't really mentioned rush at all, but played very well as a, as a backup quarterback, the expectations were low, but he, he kept, you know, he kept things rolling, right? He's not an option to replace Dak long-term. With Dak's cap number, you're not going to be able to go out and sign a big money free agent. The quarterbacks yeah. like that don't ever get to free agency. So is the plan to let him play out the contract and then hopefully draft somebody two years from now and hope well, they're as good as Dak? I don't know. Here's the real question, right? Is that do the Cowboys ever have a plan to – Jordan love any of this, right? Like, like the investment to me that would make sense from <laughs> what we know about the Cowboys is, Hey, I, we got this fifth round guy. We, you know, we've developed fifth round and under, fourth round and undrafted free agent quarterbacks before let's try to develop this guy. I guess what the, the cons, not concern, but the, 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 the honest question I have is would this team be, I'm going to say brave enough, Right to take a quarterback in the first round before they needed one in order to kind of have something in place for when Dak is finished. I mean, Dak turns 30 this year. If he's not, he, no. I think he is 30. I'll, right? I'll answer that question. As long as Jerry Jones is alive, there's no chance. See, and that's no the problem. Chance. And I think that's the concern is that is that it's hard for this team to, to – Take a take, you know. I think ever since Rocket Ishmael, honestly, it's hard for Jerry Jones to not use his first round pick, uh, and 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 and, and not get something immediately in return. I think you mean with, Joey with, Galloway, right? Oh, sorry, Galloway. Yeah, sorry, yeah. Galloway. Yeah. Always get that. Yeah. So I, I I think that's where you have concern is will this team you know make the commitment to 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 protect themselves in the future and honestly protect themselves from Dak Prescott because because ultimately what's going to happen is that Dak is going to get through this contract and if the Cowboys don't have a situation going Todd France is just going to continue to have Dak sign these 3 and 4 year deals they're going to come back here in 2026 or whatever and 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 can, and just in, and continue to increase the deal. And and look, as long as Dak is playing well, that's fine. But if you don't have another quarterback waiting in the wings or someone to develop or something that's, you know, investment at the quarterback position outside of Dak Prescott, he's just going to continue to rake you over the coals every single time contract negotiations come through. And you're not going to have a long-term solution so that, you know, with if, heaven forbid, something happens to Dak that, like, happened to Romo, you're going to be stuck in a terrible spot unless you totally luck out like you did with Dak Prescott. Yeah. They, they just don't have a lot of avenues to replacing Dak Prescott if they decide to do that. Right. Like his cap number is so big in 2024 that you almost have to do some kind of contract extension to smooth it out. Mm -hmm. um, and again, th this Cowboys team is going to be good for the next two years. You just look at the core of this roster in the superstars and where they have their talent kind of aligned, they're not going to be picking inside the top 18 picks in the next several years. It's just not going to happen. So do you envision this team trading up like the chiefs did in 2017, going from like 27 to 10 when they have Dak Prescott under contract? Probably not. Mm -hmm. I think the only way, the only way the Cowboys could consider moving on from Dak is if you had a, and this doesn't happen in the NFL. If you had a star quarterback trying to force his way to Dallas, 
like we've seen in the NBA where, you know, a basketball player is like, Hey, I'm going here, figure it out. I, this is where I want to play. Maybe it's name your quarterback. Justin Herbert decides he wants mm-hmm. to play for the Cowboys. Right. Mm-hmm. But I don't see that happening. So it's, for better or worse, the Cowboys are probably going to have to really lean into Dak for the next three or four years and hope that last year was just an aberration. And I, I, I think it was. I, th- I think you're going to get a yeah. much, much better Dak this season. I would be more concerned about this whole process if I didn't have confidence in Dak Prescott. And the yeah. truth of the matter is, is that I do. And and I, I think that, it, yeah, it's it's not just we're not just hoping it was an abnormality last year. I think if you go back and examine what happened to Dak Prescott, it, it, there's a lot of circumstance there. So I still have a lot of faith in yeah. Dak Prescott. And I still, I, you know, I think he can win a Super Bowl this year. I, I believe that, you know, I just, I, I think that, you know, it's still, he still needs more help from his team in order to kind of take it to that next level. And, and I think that that's, you know, common for every quarterback, uh, including Patrick Mahomes, you know, yep. everybody needs a little bit of help. So you can always get better, right? Yeah. You can. And look, the, the good teams are always getting better. Yeah. Uh, last question. Um, at what point do the Cowboys need to invest just a day three pick or like an upside backup quarterback? They have Cooper rush. I think he signed a one year or a two year deal. He's I mean, he's your backup, right? That's the, his job is to help Dak get ready, but when and how do they kind of improve that? developmental QB spot on the roster. Well, I, I would have assumed that they would have done it this year. I mean, I think that they wanted to, if things had fallen, right. I, I, I think that the idea will be kind of moving forward to try to cheaply invest in quarterback every year and then just hope you get a lottery ticket once in a while. Right. Um, you know, obviously the, the, the Packers had a lot of success doing that when, when, when McCarthy was there and, and even before McCarthy was there. So I, I think that that will probably be the plan moving forward try to find a better, a better, more talented, younger Will Greer um, and and see if you can kind of hold on to him until he's ready to maybe take a, a step into the backup role or, or beyond. Uh, but that's likely that, you know, for the reasons that we just discussed, that's likely the, the development plan at the quarterback position it, is to numbers, right? To throw numbers at the position. It, I also wonder, like, because they missed out on a quarterback in this year's draft, would they be open to, like, sending a late day three pick for another quarterback that was drafted highly that, whose situation changed. Like for example, the Panthers drafted Matt Corral in mm-hmm. round three last year. They changed coaching staffs. They drafted Bryce young in round one. They signed Andy Dalton. Like, would you flip a six round pick for Matt Corral, who some people thought was a first round pick or, you know, Zach Wilson or Malik yeah. Willis or like name your guy. I mean that's that's so much the kind of cowboy style and and, and method of, of of player acquisition anyways that absolutely they would do that if they found someone that you know was in a situation where there's a coaching staff change or or whatever a new GM that didn't uh, draft those players so they don't have the same sort of ties yeah the Cowboys are always looking to take advantage of situations like that to try to get players that are in bad situations so I, I absolutely think the Cowboys would look at that. All right, that is it for today's show. We want to thank you guys for making Lot On Cowboys your first listen of the day. Every day or tomorrow, we are talking about the running backs, the play that they got last year, what we expect this year, then the future of that running back position, which is fascinating with Tony yeah. Pollard playing on the franchise tag. So make sure you tune in for that. We are free and available on all platforms. You can check us out on YouTube, Locked On Cowboys. Go follow Landon on Twitter at McCoolBCB. I'm at Marcus underscore Mosher. And we'll see you right back here tomorrow.